Hi, this time we will explain the storyline of a film called Gravity, which was released back in 2013. All right, so let's get straight to the storyline. Once upon a time in outer space, three astronauts were tasked with repairing a device. They were Kowalski, Stone, and Sheriff. They worked in a relaxed manner but remained focused. They also always communicated with the mission control officer called Houston. Kowalski looked very relaxed. He seemed to really like to float around while listening to music. He was also diligent in telling many things to his colleagues. Sheriff also seemed to enjoy his work in a relaxed manner, therefore, he occasionally floated around while dancing. The most serious at work was Stone. She admitted that she was used to working in an underground laboratory, so she was not too used to working in a place where there was no gravity. While working, Houston received data from the medical team that Stone's body temperature was dropping, and Houston then asked if she wanted to return to their spaceship named the Explorer. Stone claimed to be fine, and she decided to continue with her work. While checking the device, Stone couldn't find the cause of the problem, Kowalski then came and helped her. As they continued working, Houston contacted the Explorer and informed them that a Russian satellite had been hit by a missile the explosion created debris orbiting at 20,000 miles per hour. Houston also informed them that at this time the debris had not yet entered the explorer's orbit and was not dangerous. But Houston said he would keep them posted. After hearing that, Stone asked if they should be worried, but Kowalski told her not to think about it. They then continued to work in a relaxed manner. Kowalski even returned to telling stories while occasionally admiring the beauty of the Earth's scenery from outer space. When Kowalski was telling a story, Houston contacted the Explorer again and informed them that the mission had been canceled. Houston immediately ordered them to stop all their work, according to existing procedures, and also told them to return immediately to the Explorer. Kowalski asked Houston for an explanation, and Houston explained that the debris from the missile strike caused a chain of impact and hit other satellites creating new debris. The debris was moving at a speed faster than a bullet and heading towards Kowalski and his friends. Kowalski immediately got ready to leave while ordering Stone to stop her work, but Stone did not immediately comply because she felt responsible for her job. Kowalski then scolded her and Stone complied while apologizing. Traveling faster than a high speed bullet up to That's an order. Okay, I'm sorry. Houston kept giving them news and now Houston reported that the cause of the chaos was the Russians who had shot their own satellite on purpose. On top of that, the situation was getting worse and their communication system was in danger of being cut off. That it's the unintentional side of the While in a hurry to leave, Stone instead got stuck in one of the devices and Kowalski approached to help her. Suddenly, satellite debris started to arrive and hit Sheriff. No, don't wait for us. <laughs> The debris then got bigger and hit everything that was there. Kowalski ran away to save himself, and Stone who was still stuck was swayed by a pole. She spun because of the impact of the debris and kept going off track. When she was swayed, Stone let go of the rope that made her get stuck in the pole. She was then released from the pole and was thrown farther and farther. Stone kept moving away from the earth and she was really panicking. Kowalski kept talking to her via a communication line and asked her to report her position or tell him what she saw. She then tried to calm down and tell him what she saw so Kowalski could determine her position. But Kowalski didn't even respond. At 12 o'clock, the shuttle is up. Anyone? Stone, who was frightened, then called Houston. But Houston also did not respond. Meanwhile, Stone's position continued to move away and towards the dark side of the Earth. While tossed around in the dark, Kowalski reconnected with her, and Stone quickly responded. Kowalski then ordered Stone to turn on her flashlight. Not long after Kowalski came to Stone, Kowalski had a device that could shoot gas to propel him to move anywhere. He then tied Stone at him and started moving towards the Explorer. While heading there, Kowalski kept trying to contact Houston, but Houston never gave him an answer. 
On top of that, the debris would hit them again in 90 minutes and Stone's oxygen was already dropping. Set your watch for 90 minutes. After that, Kowalski saw the floating corpse of Sheriff. He then wanted to take his to the plane, but that instead made Stone move towards hitting Sheriff. Stone then held him, and Kowalski went to the Explorer. Here we go. The Stone could clearly see Sheriff's face, which was perforated by the impact of the debris. Even so, she still held on to him tightly. Oxygen continued to drop, but they finally arrived at the Explorer. They landed by hitting the wall of the shuttle and bounced around before they were able to hold it properly and stabilize themselves. But due to the impact, Sheriff was detached from Stone. And it turned out that inside it was a mess. The Explorer crew who were there were also dead. Seeing that, Stone felt guilty and apologized for not immediately obeying Kowalski to stop her work when the debris attacked. Kowalski said that the debris would still hit them, and he said it was not Stone's fault. Because the Explorer was destroyed, Kowalski invited Stone to go to the space station to retrieve a Russian lifeboat named Soyuz so they could return to Earth. Even though the place was a bit far away, they had no choice. On the way there, Kowalski saved gas so they just floated leisurely towards the space station. Kowalski then started asking Stone many things. From that conversation, it was known that Stone came from the Lake Zurich area and was no longer married. She once had a daughter but her child died when she was four years old because of an accident, and that made Stone's life empty. They were finally getting closer to the space station, but Stone's oxygen was critical. Good news is we're about five minutes from the ISS and I Steady. Kowalski then turned on the gas and they slid closer to their destination, but they couldn't land smoothly. They both hit the space station and bounced several times. The rope that connected them broke, and Stone got caught in the hanging rope. At that time, Kowalski was thrown in a far direction, but Stone managed to catch him. Kowalski knew that if it continued like that, the two of them would not survive. He ordered Stone to let him go, but Stone refused. Kowalski finally released himself and floated away from Stone. Stone, who felt sad, started to move to enter the space station. Even though he had drifted far away, Kowalski still spoke to her via a communication device to continue giving her directions. After trying, Stone finally entered the space station and immediately opened her helmet and astronaut suit. There she breathed oxygen freely and relaxed her body. Tell me where you are. Give me your position. Matt, this is Ryan Coffey. Shortly thereafter, she started exploring the plane and immediately tried to contact Kowalski, but Kowalski was not responding. The grieving stone was shocked by an alarm indicating a fire was on the plane. She then looked for the source of the fire and found that a room was already on fire. Stone initially tried to extinguish the fire with a fire extinguisher, but the fire had already spread, and it seemed that it was too late. Stone immediately fled to the Soyuz lifeboat. At that time, Stone accidentally brought a fire extinguisher with her. Stone then opened the guidebook, and she began to separate the Soyuz from the space station. When the Soyuz began to move away, the Soyuz bounced because it was stuck in a large parachute. Stone was forced to wear an astronaut suit and get out of the Soyuz to free the lifeboat from the object that was entangling the lifeboat. What Stone was doing was disturbed by the debris that came back and hit whatever was in the way. Amidst the chaos, Stone managed to detach the Soyuz and survive the wreckage. Stone then re-entered the Soyuz and set a goal of heading towards the Chinese space station. When she was about to start leaving, she was confused because the Soyuz was not moving. After noticing the fuel ran out, Stone went on a rampage inside the Soyuz and was utterly frustrated. Stone then tried to contact Houston and tried to get as much help as she could, but it seemed to be in vain, and Stone instead got a connection from a telephone signal that was on Earth. Stone started crying and gave up. She turned off the lights and lowered the oxygen level there. 
Shortly thereafter, Kowalski came banging on the Soyuz and startled Stone. He claimed to find extra battery power so it could get there. Kowalski then turned on the lights, increased the oxygen levels, and motivated Stone to want to return to Earth. Kowalski also told Stone another way to try to return home. After a while, Stone realized, and it turned out that Kowalski who came to her was not real. She was alone in the Soyuz, but Kowalski's recent illusion was able to raise her spirits and a way for Stone to keep trying. Stone then tried the method Kowalski had told her to, and the Soyuz began to move. At that time, Stone thanked Kowalski, and she spoke to herself, which introduced her daughter named Sarah. Stone then saw that the Chinese space station had deviated from its position and began to be attracted towards the atmosphere. Stone was determined to chase it, because she had no other choice but to return to Earth by boarding a Chinese lifeboat named Shenzhou. After getting a little closer, Stone put on her astronaut helmet and exited the Soyuz with a fire extinguisher. She fired it to bring her closer to the Chinese space station. Stone repeatedly did it until she could reach the wall of the station. After several somersaults, Stone was finally able to find the door. But the Chinese space station was getting closer to the atmosphere and began to shake violently. Plus, the debris that was continuously orbiting had reached her and started hitting everything. Stone managed to get in just before more and more debris flew by. Inside, Stone immediately looked for the Shenzhou and entered it. Meanwhile, the Chinese space station began to go into the atmosphere and parts of it were already being eroded. Inside the Shenzhou, Stone struggled as the writing on the buttons and monitor was in Chinese characters. Stone then tried to remember the location of the buttons she needed from the Soyuz. Although confused, Stone finally managed to turn it on and the Shenzhou began to separate itself from the Chinese space station. Stone felt happy for what she had done. Now she was faced with two possibilities, which were to make it safely to Earth and had a great experience to share or to burn to death in the next few minutes. Even so, no matter what happened, Stone admitted that she had no regrets. Stone started to shake violently. The Shenzhou was again separated into three parts and all of them were very hot due to the eroding of the atmosphere. Some of the other parts had even shrunk and crumbled while Stone was still safe and continued to fall down to Earth. Soon, Stone was getting closer to land and the Shenzhou opened its parachute. The Shenzhou then landed on a lake in a deserted place. Upon landing, she heard Houston starting to connect and called the Shenzhou crew to report her identity. Stone, who was busy landing, did not answer the call, but Houston said that a rescue team was being deployed there. Stone then opened the door of the Shenzhou, but because she landed in the lake, the water quickly entered and made Stone bounce back inside. The Shenzhou then sank with Stone in it. At the bottom of the lake, Stone swam out but had difficulty because of her thick astronaut suit. She then took off the clothing and swam to the surface. Upon arriving, Stone sucked in the air greedily and headed towards the ledge. There, Stone who was exhausted had difficulty getting up, but she instead smiled happily because she could feel gravity again after a long time of oscillating in outer space. Stone then mustered her strength to stand up and started to limping away from the lake.